Hello and welcome to Resident Arcade episode 74. My name's Chris and as always I'm joined by my co-hosts, Matt, co-hosts, co-hosts, Matt and Danny. Cohorts. Cohorts? Like cohorts. I've been using that word at work recently. Anyway, get it through. <laughs> uh, we are switching the format up a little bit this week, keeping some sections the same, changing some others. So, Matt, why don't you tell our listeners what's coming up first? Well, our flashback section is changing a little. Instead of just the one game, we're going to talk about about any games we've had recent hands-on experience with where we have something new and most importantly in- interesting to say it's interesting that i can't say interesting bearing that in mind this week chris has been playing dying light oxygen not included horizon zero dawn and ultimate chicken horse online which does sound like an mmo that i want to be a part of <laughs> and danny is still banging on about gears of war for but i think he's played something else have you played something else pray maybe I started pray yeah Mm, okay, and mm. I've been sinking an embarrassing amount of hours into WoW Classic and Civ Five. And because we're shit at coming up with names, we've consolidated our "What are you looking forward to in hardware hot pants?" sections into a new section: the working title preview hot pants. This I is would like I... to do that. <laughs> 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 <What? Sorry. laughs> oh. <laughs> and it is a word I can't say. This is where we'll regale or regale you with our opinions on recent gaming news, new game releases and announcements, any hardware news. And at some point in the future, we might even put some, some effort into an opinion piece or two. Yeah, we'll see how we get on with that, depending <laughs> on how much effort these t- these guys put into updating the script. And uh, yeah. Some <laughs> effort. <laughs> anyway, feel free to send us any suggestions if you've got any ideas better than preview hot pants, because these two... Just don't speak to me during the week, and I have to come up with everything myself. Barely, barely. (laughs) And as always, let's get started with our competition. What are you selling? What are you buying? I've been playing, uh, as as, as, um, one of you pointed out, I've been playing Dying Light, and they've got another, there was something in that was, I've got a a deal for you. It's the same Uh, guy. I'm sure it's the same (laughs) guy that does it. Anyway, so this is our competition where we... Um, essentially one member of the team tries to sell the other two members a game and then the award points based on whether they would buy it at full price or whether they would buy it at the lowest possible sale price I'm not actually sure if I've got prices for the game today today it is mine I'll have to look it up in fact one of you look up this uh, look up this game while I uh, while I witter on we have two minutes to sell this game and this week let me get the timer up I am selling Kingdom New Lands. Two minutes. Right, okay, it's a 2D scro- side-scrolling minimalist builder game. It's not a berry picker. You'll be glad to know. <laughs> uh, however, you can think of it as a survival game to an extent. So basically, you're this king or a queen. It's randomly generated. Um, it's got beautiful kind of parallax 8-bit graphics. Um, essentially, you are this king or queen. You run around collecting coins in various different ways. Um, and then you have to build a kingdom just on a 2d plane both like left and right you build it um you've got it's a very it's minimalist because you've got four buttons you've got left right run and action the action basically spends a coin or no that's it it just spends a coin there's a, you, you you basically pick coins up and spend them so you can upgrade things like um you can upgrade your buildings uh, your walls you can upgrade archer towers you can uh, recruit um villagers when you recruit a villager they walk back to your village so uh, b- based on the type of level you play in they might there might be little village camps in various areas you give them a coin they walk back to your village but there's always a threat of the greed and the greed of the enemies in the game they come from either side they come from portals and certain nights they generate and they send tons of like little green things towards you as the game progresses every day um it gets harder and harder and harder as the game progresses, you have to upgrade from wooden structures to stone structures to... Uh, I think stone structures are the last, but you, you get different levels of it. You also then have the facility to um, up, uh, upgrade your, your guys, the people you've recruited, to archers, uh, engineers, farmers, or knights. Knights are like a really late level one. I've got 10 seconds left, and I've got nowhere near everything I need to talk about in here. Um, you can improve your castle. You can uh, s- save money in a bank with this merchant guy. And it's it's brilliant. I love it. And I've got one second left. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we've got plenty of opportunity to ask questions this week. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot in the game. That's the thing. It's, it's minimalist, 
But the, the basic premise, as I said, is spend a coin, uh, pick coins up, spend the coins. That's it. And everything costs coins. Um, the original, there's actually three versions of the game. Sorry, I'm, I'm running over here. I'm breaking my own rules. Go on, Silence. Ask, ask, ask questions with So, Danny, you got any questions? Yeah, so when you're saying you, you pick up a coin and spend a coin, you, I'm assuming you get to pick what structures and where. Yes, and half of the challenge is um, knowing where to spend the money. Right. Because okay. it's an early game, it's really hard to come across money. Then you figure some of the mechanics out and it becomes much, much easier, but only if you spent them in the right places. It's not set. It is yeah. very much up to you how you do it. You know, it's like Sim City. You know, you build, you build a, a city. But Matt, so you said that you've got four buttons: left, right, run, and spend money. So, is it turn based? Nope, not at all. It's completely dynamic. It's day based. So every day um, has a set period. You've got a day and a night. At the night, the greed come and try and attack you if it's that particular scene. There's also special events and things as well that occur, but I won't go into much more detail on that. Not turn based. Danny? Okay. Does it have. So I'm assuming you can just build. As if you're good at the game and you just can build, build out to infinity, I assume? Does. No. Uh, every level is finite. There is a certain right. element of procedural generation in the original game. So I was talking about Kingdom New Lands. What the developers have done is they've developed three games. They've developed Kingdom, Kingdom New Lands, and then Kingdom Two Crowns. Two Crowns is like the co op version of it with a few extras. Uh, New Lands was, the original was just procedurally generated levels. Uh, you had a start and an end on each each side. But in New Lands, you have uh, one side which has usually has like a persistent portal. And then there's other portals across the level as well um, that generate enemies. On the other side has a dock on it. And the dock is where your ship, you have to build a ship as part of New Lands. And when you built the ship and you've um, got enough resources you can use the dock to get to the next level okay so what are these special events that you were talking about before um so m more mainly there's uh, something called the blood moon which you'll have heard of in plenty of other games so on the blood moon nights which i can't remember exactly when it occurs everything goes dark music changes slightly and you get absolutely destroyed so you better be prepared for it half of the challenge is knowing if you send one of your engineers out to cut a tree down, for example, and you do it just at the wrong time, you have to look at where the sun is in the sky. If you do it at the wrong time, he'll run off and do it anyway, and he'll get destroyed, by, and, and you'll lose that guy. And, and one guy, losing one guy is quite a big thing um, in this game. So you went, just going, it sort of ties back into the previous question. You say it's finite, but does it get bigger? Like, does it start to extend? Or is it just a finite amount? And then that ties into really recruiting people do they just like randomly drop in in this finite space as it were no it... so across the across the level across this 2d plane um as i said it's parallax so there's like a background and a, and a yeah. foreground it's really nice really pretty looking 8-bit graphics um so you start off with a finite area there's there's a campfire you spend three coins i think or one coin to build the first campfire and it's just a campfire you then have to spend one coin per um, on each side to put up your first defenses, and then you have to take you have to recruit an engineer, which by default there's like a couple that you already get, or you can that are right next to the center of the level. Um, depending on the level as well, some of the levels don't have the starting um, starting engineers. Once you've um, once you've built your initial defences, you can then build archer towers, and they defend the area, but also your archers who go out hunting to gain coins, they will also go behind your defences at night and help you defend. But you expand out from both sides, and it's up to you how you do it, but if you expand too far too quickly, you're not going to make it. You have to be very careful about how you do it. You expand by cutting down trees and... Um, and essentially spending coins on particular areas so like a mound uh, builds a defense and then there's a there's like a rocks and they build the archer towers but then it's a bit random it's the not in set right, places I see. okay so there's there's quite a lot of strategy to it even though it's really minimal okay matt last question i think um 
I did have one, but I don't know if it's really a good question. I was going to ask, is it available on any other platforms other than PC? I think so. I think it's on Switch and PlayStation 4 at least. Might be wrong there. Those are the sweet words Matt wanted to hear. They were. Be, be honest with you, Twitch. I didn't see. It's one of them games that I bought ages ago because I saw someone on Twitch playing. Um, okay. And always, it might have been YouTube. It might have been um, one of the co-optional podcast guys on YouTube. Um, and, I, and I thought, ooh, this looks really cool. Watched him for a little bit, and I thought that is actually right up my street. And I've, it's one of them. It's another one of them games that I go back to quite regularly because it's dead quick, dead simple. Would be perfect for the Switch. Would be absolutely mm -hmm. perfect for the Switch. Um, and Two Crowns has a progression element to it as well. Sorry, not Two Crowns. New Lands, the one I've got. I haven't got Two Crowns because I haven't really got anyone to co-op with, so there's not much point. Um, but New Lands has a progression element in that you open a particular area or finish a particular land, you unlock something, and then you can go back to that land and unlock something else. Like you, you might unlock a bear statue or something, or you might spend a coin on a bear statue and you'll go back and you've got a different mount on that level. Because you, oh, I forgot to mention as well, the king or queen is on a horse, so you're oh. running, you're running back and forth uh, on the level. Basically, there's a lot of back and forth constantly, um, but it's. Okay. it's I think that's three. Is that three from everyone? That's three from me. Okay, so did you look up how much it costs? Because I didn't make a note of that. Yeah, I it did. It is ten pounds ninety nine on Steam. I have not looked up lowest prices though. Historical sure. lowest price is two pound nineteen. Ooh. And just to chuck it in the mix, it is available for Android, iOS, PlayStation Four, Nintendo Switch, Linux, and Mac, which is impressive. But there you go. Then it was was that price for New Lands or was that for the original Kingdom Classic? The eleven pounds or ten ninety nine is for New Lands. New Lands, um, yeah. yeah. So I mean, I would if if anyone's going to get it. I'd recommend Two Crowns because you get the co-op version of it. The, the developers have been a bit sneaky there. They should really just release the game and updated it. But <laughs> there's actually a few reviews on Steam that say that. But it's still, you know, it's an indie developer. I, 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 I like what they've done. I like the style. Haven't run into any bugs. There's been no janky anything going on in it. So I quite enjoyed it. So cool. question is then, would you buy it at ten ninety nine? I would. I'd buy it on sale because the thing that swung it for me was saying that it's available on the Switch and on um, iOS and Android because I don't think it's the sort of thing I'd sit at my PC and play. But if I had it on my phone where I could just kind of take it out and play through it quickly, that does sound interesting to me. Yeah. So I'll I'll say half a point. All right. So Danny half full a point. point. Yeah. Danny full, full point, point Matt half point. Good, that'll do me, one and a half points. That might be the best I've done so far. <laughs> oh, let me change my answer. <laughs> <laughs> right, so moving on, moving on. Um, our first section of the show is, st well, still going to be called our flashback section. We're still going to be talking about games that we've played recently, and I'm going to let Danny the Boring Twat start. <laughs> Daniel, Look, Gears just because I play four. Gears of War a lot does not mean I am boring. I have other interests such as breathing. Um... Such as Gears of War 5. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, to get on uh, Game Pass because it's out. I <laughs> Gears of War 4 multiplayer. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, well, the reason I wanted to quickly include it is because it's like pretty much all I've managed to play recently is just finishing off that campaign for Gears of War 4. And I only wanted to play it because of the campaign. I've not been interested in the multiplayer whatsoever. I just kind of wanted to catch up on it. Um, overall, I did enjoy the campaign. And does do a little a little nod towards the end for the people who played one, two, and three, which I was happy about. The pacing felt a bit weird, and I can't go into too much detail without spoiling it, but it felt like you had a you had a set goal, then there's a twist, and then the bit from the twist to the end is really, really quick, and it's just like, what the fuck is going on? Like it was, oh, it, it was. Did you ever play? Uh, were you either of you the fan of the Metal Gear Solid uh, yeah. series? Did you play mm -hmm. five. Yeah, uh, I did, but not through. Oh, I've, 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 I need I've to not finished it, it. I mean, I'm a massive MGS fanboy and, um, well, Kojima fanboy in general. Um, I can say five. <laughs> well, yeah, actually, yeah, I forgot about that. Um, that that's massive, is it? If it, I'm sure there's people who've got much better homages to, to MGS. I've got Kojima wallpaper. Yeah, I've uh, got a snake body pillow. <laughs> I, uh, oh, Colonel. 
<laughs> but yeah, the end of MGS5 felt exactly like that, but that was rushed by commercial decisions, you know, trying, right. there, was a, there was a whole load of stuff going on economy at the time, and Kojima ended up not working for them uh, yeah. by the end of it. But yeah, anyway, sorry, hijacked no, you there. Hijacked it. Yeah, so overall, I did enjoy it. It has taken, it, it, it's, what, what I'm going to say, it's it's the game that injected new life into it. It's explaining why there's more Gears of War games, if you get me, and okay, it's pretty. it's a pretty cool story I, I did enjoy it quite a lot um i think that the only thing that kind of threw me was they added new weapons in but almost like so you know in the gears of war series you had the cog weapons and you had the um locust weapons well they kind of chucked in newer cog weapons which were non-lethal by design but are able to go lethal so these non-lethal weapons that you pick up and things are a bit pants and it's feather just, duster yeah just like a rubber bullet shooter and it's not actually airsoft a rubber bullet gun. shooter airsoft guns now that yeah <laughs> but they were <laughs> it was just a bit of a chore to get through the first half of the game i would say but then it really picked up pace and then it kind of finished rather abruptly but yeah definitely gonna be playing through gears 5 to see what that's got in store for me and then the only other thing that i've played is i managed to literally start prey because it's on the game pass so i picked this, that up this was two weeks ago wasn't it this that you was started two weeks ago. It. yeah i've not picked it up since um <laughs> And I'm a little bit like it, it fucked my head for a second when I was getting into Prey. I was just like, okay, in what cool. respect? We're going to space. Cool. Wait, what? Have you been out <laughs> into space yet? No. Oh, gosh, you, that's, that's kind of like a third of the way through or a quarter yeah, of the way through. Not, not quite there yet. And I was just like, okay, I kind of see what's going on. So I don't know enough at this point, but I have a feeling I'm already in space in some respect and it's just a mirage that's going on hence oh right you oh jesus christ yeah. right i yeah. i understand right all right we'll talk about it more when you finish that and we'll mm -hmm. have to say spoilers um yeah. when we do that even though uh, matt are you and you matt, matt hasn't played it and probably i'm won't. not I'd, I'd like to play it whether i get time to play it's another thing right uh, okay yeah, yeah kind of sense yeah all right, like well, the mechanics let's... seem all right. It, it's a, it feels it's... like an inventory manager, though. It, it, no, some... no, it didn't. It, not, by the end of it, bad... you, you forget about that, but it depends oh, okay. on how you upgrade your character and that. Um, but yeah, cool. we'll, we, but yeah, we'll save that for another episode when you've got um, when you've got a bit more experience in it because you, you've literally done nothing if you haven't. If you, <laughs> if I got in a helicopter, I flew somewhere, and then I am that's where I saved it. I tell you, boys, yeah. this title screen's great. What? <laughs> Oh, they've done right. really good with the particle effects on this start screen. <laughs> so I've got I've got a few games this week. I'll go next. Um, I've been talk I've been playing quite a lot, but I've got I'm close to completion on on a few of them. Um, so first of all, I'm not going to talk about them all now. We'll 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 flip between me and Matt. But first of all, I'm playing Horizon Zero Dawn. I said that a few weeks back. I have either of you played that at all? No. Still waiting to be played. So it's, I didn't, I got really bored of it in the middle and I picked it back up and I'm really quite enjoying it now. And I'm so close to the end. All of the story is just getting, it's just like right at the end, it's just like, it's yeah. just everything's just getting up, like laid out in front of me. And I'm spending so much time reading stuff and listening to audio recordings and not, because I've spent so much time fighting bloody dinosaurs and um, and collecting resources and opening up every single item on the map. By the way, if anybody is a completionist and they want that achievement, uh, they think there's an achievement rather for using all of the campfires. There isn't really annoying. There's like 500 <laughs> campfires. I've 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 saved at all of them. No, nope. didn't give me an achievement. Bastard. Did you not look through the achievements before visiting all 500 campfires? <laughs> no, but it was. It, to be fair, you go to where, you go to areas right. near them. Also, it's not a difficult. Uh, okay. It's not a particularly hard one. Um, but I'm. I tell you what, I'm glad I stuck with it because the story is. It's right up there with like dystopian kind of futuristic, uh, the kind of stuff that I like. Ninety not 1984. That's totally wrong. But it's like you know. Um, end of the world scenario. And it's brilliant how they've, they've done it so far, and I can't wait to find the actual conclusion, you know, to actually know. It's compelling, put it that way. Yeah. Everything I'm doing so far. One thing I tend to suffer from in open world games is I'll play them and I'll do all of the side quests and I'll exhaust myself with the side quests, um, exhaust myself going to collect everything and see, you know, use every campfire and stuff and, you know, unlock all of the, all of the, the 
extra armor and weapons and shit. And pick all the berries. And I'll be well. There's there's loads of berries in Horizon Zero. Dawn. Um, <laughs> they all do something different as well. <laughs> the green ones oh, and the blue God. ones and the red ones. <laughs> They're all different. <laughs> Wait, so you've got RG berries? <laughs> RG berries, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, stick with it. If you, if you did get bored in the middle of it and you like a, a, a quite a cold, it feels like it's going to be a cold European European kind kind of ending. I hope it is anyway. Mind you, it's an American game, isn't it? So we don't know. We'll see. It's only available on PlayStation 4, isn't it? Because I haven't... Mm. It was. I don't know if it is oh, right. still. Probably. I feel like I that's like retro, retro, like retrospectively need to get a PS4 now to play some of these games because a lot of good stuff coming out on the PlayStation. Never hearing this kind of thing about Xbox games. You know no, I mean? Xbox has no. failed this generation entirely. Yeah. It's not... Um, so that, That's why they're sending most of the stuff to the PC now just because they know the that they've now, kind of yeah. copped out on it. Right. But they'll they'll learn the lesson for the next gen. That they made a massive mistake with the launch. They made a massive mistake not getting anywhere near enough exclusives. Simple as that. But mind you, the, the whole launch connect thing really screwed them. Really screwed them. Oh god, yeah, Com of course. completely yeah. misread yeah. the audience. Yeah, absolutely. I remember now. And by the way, you have to pay an extra three hundred pounds for this piece of hardware that you but don't if, want. But what if you don't? No, want I it? don't. Tough. <laughs> I remember it now. It's coming back. You, you do. You do know that Sony exists, don't you guys? You know that there's a competitor. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right. Moving on, Matt. What you got to talk about this week? What's uh, what's your first game? I've kind of burnt myself out on WoW Classic, actually, after a particularly heavy session um, over the weekend. And now I, I haven't played it in about five days. <laughs> <laughs> so but what, what were you doing? What were you doing in the sesh? Well, I started out just leveling some. I'm, I think I'm level 25 at the minute. And it basically got into a situation with like a few of my friends where we were just running dungeons like over and over again. And it's I, I enjoy it and I missed it. But then like, I think I did one too many and I was getting like sick of it while doing it. And it kind of, all the little things that you, you know, the rose tinted glasses just slipped for a minute. And then like, I haven't really managed to push them back on yet. So I, I probably will go back to it, but right now I'm, I'm, oh yeah. And then I got killed by somebody like a rogue jumped <laughs> out and just like stabbed me. And I'm like, well, fuck this shit. I'm out. <laughs> rage quit. I, I did. I proper rage quit and went on Maud how. <laughs> Which LFG, LFG quick. tank. <laughs> um, that, that's, so that's, that's the other thing I got sick of. Like, I, I'm playing as a warrior, but I've put, I, I didn't have the money to buy any tanking uh, spec stuff. So like, it's just all arms. And the number of times I've said like, oh, DPS, you know, looking for group for whatever. And somebody will message me going, oh, hey, can you tank? It's like, no, I can't. Otherwise, I'd have said I were a tank. Because you know what? If I were a tank, I could get straight in a group and I wouldn't have to fuck around with you. <laughs> <laughs> See, see, that's why WoW Classic is no. Oh, sorry, WoW is no longer WoW Classic because all of that shit. Well, not that I've played it, so I don't know what the most modern version of WoW like plays like. But apparently, it's a lot easier, isn't it, to get groups? You can just click a button and you're in. It is, but you. I mean, you do lose the community, but that's not always a bad thing because <laughs> I it's did get into. Knobs. A, <laughs> I got. I got into a couple of pretty heated arguments over Scythoid eggs the other day because somebody. <laughs> right. I, I I was there. I was doing my business, trying to kill this maggot thing, and this priest runs up and starts nicking it. So I said, "Dude, what are you doing?" And he replied, "Like, why shouldn't I?" And in the time I was responding to him, I died, and it just it, I was fucking seething. I it was it was one of the worst experiences I've had gaming in the last fifteen years. It's the worst thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life. Had. <laughs> I thought, what should I do? Should I whisper him and like, you know, rage at him? And I thought, no, that's that's the silly way. So I just reported him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the way you portrayed that was brilliant. <laughs> Why shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> you you don't know how mad it was making me. <laughs> I, I do, mate. I I remember. I, I still it, remember yeah. how how well made me feel. It, it took me straight back to being an angry, angry fifteen year old throwing a mile a wireless mouse across the room. I, <laughs> I don't need to go back to that. We'll see. We'll see how you get on in a few weeks. See if you've gone back to it at all. Oh wow! If if I can't see you all because I've smashed my monitor, you know why. <laughs> do you uh, do you play the original WoW? Uh, sorry, not the original. The 
uh, what do you call it now? Wow, uh, new re retail the call it for whatever reason. But I I did um, because I was kind of on the hype train. I thought, well, I'll, I'll get the latest expansion. I'll play through it, and like nobody else is really playing it. So I thought I'll get to the end, and I'll just do PvP because I can kind of pick it up and play it as I want. And it was it was fun for a few weeks, but like after two weeks, like you can only grind so much for the PvP gear. You can only get so much like reward out of it a week. So there's no incentive to keep playing it. Everything mm -hmm. feels very time gated and very much like Activision have got the claws into it. So Fair it's enough. it's a bit sad, really. But I mean, I I will go back to WoW Classic at some point, but I do need to calm down a little bit first. For, for, I think for me, it's just I do not have time in my life for, for that level of commitment now. For for what I'd want to get out of it, I don't have the the time. I want to just pick a game up and then drop it. Yeah. Speaking of games that I pick up and drop, um, it's pretty much everything I'm playing at the moment. I'm, I'm just jumping into it for five minutes or ten minutes and then, uh, you know, coming out and getting on with things. Um, been playing Dying Light again, inspired okay. by Danny, kicking people's heads in outside of the Yorkshire. water. Weather spots. Yorkshire. Yorkshire. Um, anyway, I picked it up. It was on sale. I put it on my wish list, um, not knowing it was out for PC. PC. Put it on my wish list. Came down like in sale there within two weeks. It was about eight quid or something. And I thought, oh, I'll grab that. Why not? So I've uh, I've got it on PlayStation and PC now. I've played so much more and enjoyed it so much more on PC because of the because I can actually do the parkour without yeah. without. I, honestly, it's so slow in comparison playing it playing it with a joypad. And I know there'll be people out there that can put the sensitivity up and can you know deal with that that level of speed but i just can't do it and I, I just i'm probably at the point now i think i'm about 17 hours in and i'm a, I'm a bit of a completionist with this these kind of things i'll get every single thing uh, i'm really i'm enjoying it i'm in the old town now and um is there a one after the old town or uh, i'm not gonna say okay right Th there's another game that i played and i remember specific a specific area and it might even have been something like dead island um, and it just feels like I should have seen it by now, but I, I might be just thinking of Dead Island, I think. Um, Maybe. What? Well, how do you think uh, the combat differs? Because you're saying about the parkour stuff, but the combat between a PlayStation 4 and the PC version, that must be vastly different with speed. I, I can aim at people's heads, put it that way, and yeah. take someone out pretty quick and slice people in half if I want to. And it's 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 not exactly perfect, but... If you're yeah. looking at someone's head or you're looking at someone's belly or their arm on the PC, well, on, on both the co console and the PC, you chop it off, you know? kind of knows what you want to, to do, doesn't it? Yeah. But I've got years of experience playing FPS games on with a mouse and I much yeah. prefer it. Again, this, this to people listening, it isn't a, a PC Master Race thing. It's just I prefer playing FPS games with a mouse and keyboard. Um, and I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that do that, but yeah, I um, that was my my main point. Other than that, it's, it's such a good game, Dying Light. It's so much fun. I'd love to play it with, you know, like co-op. and Yeah, I'm just up for that. I mean, I, I played it through recently, but I'll pick it up again. I don't care. It's literally not... Once you've done the story, it's not about that anymore. It's about the mechanics in the game, I think. And well, I'll tell you what. I'll get, really the, I'll get the story done, and then I'll give you a shout, and, yeah, uh, and we'll have a definitely. pop. Um, there's loads of things, like there's loads of daily challenges and um, bonus... bonus um, uh, there's bounties like... bounties and things that you can do yeah so yeah I, i've got all the dlc as well now so yeah i think I, yeah i think I've again well, it was so part of the pack got everything yeah, yeah. included in it and pretty good decent is it the enhanced edition is that or is that like a separate edition um i think it's called the enhanced edition with all the dlc and the season pass but it's is it the following the, the dlc there's tons well, of like I don't have it then. i've got yeah. loads of um I don't know if I've done anything on the following yet, but I've got things like I can go to the prison and do a uh, do a like a quarantine mission there. Um, there's loads of extra little bits on it than than I didn't that I didn't have on the PlayStation. Don't know if I've got that. That'd oh. be interesting. Oh, I think oh. when it first came out, like I had it day one when it was like a forty. Add the game. DLC to your wish list and just grab it when it's cheap. True. True. Anyway, Matt, other game. I've also been playing Civ Five this week, or rather I've picked up a game I started, I don't know how long ago, um, <laughs> and tried to get back into it and got completely overwhelmed because it's just not the sort of game you can pick back up after X amount of time and remember what's going on. All I know is 
I was Bismarck and everything was at war with me. And I don't remember why. Everything was at war with you. You weren't I, at war with them. It was their look, fault. Look, I may have walked into some people's <laughs> cities unannounced. I may have <laughs> taken some lands which I believed were mine when other people <laughs> didn't believe they were mine. But it's part of the game, isn't it? You know, being at I, war constantly. I, I also had panzers at all my borders, so I really can't, can't remember what was happening. But <laughs> yeah, some something happened, and then for some reason, my capital city, Berlin, um, decided that it wanted to be Polish, and then I got angry and quit the game. <laughs> I, I don't really know what what what. what I, that's the, the problem. Like, if I'd have started again. Great, I could have just played it through and I could have known exactly why everybody hated me and why I had panzers at all my borders. But I just don't know what I did. And that was kind of the fun of it. It was like I was looking back into my own little world from six months ago just to see where I was at. And apparently I was quite annoyed at the time because, as I said, everyone was at war with me. <laughs> or, or annoying rather than annoyed. Well... You were annoying everybody, poking them all. All right, Gandhi. I'm I mean, that's... <laughs> Porking's kind of a nicer way of putting Gandhi it. Gandhi declares war. That's my favourite. The favourite. Uh, do you just play Civ on your own, Matt? Like, do you just play a single player through? Oh. Basically, basically, because... Well, it's not so much that I don't have people to play it with. It's just I I think I've only ever once finished a multiplayer game of Civ just because it takes that long that there's yeah. always someone who gets distracted or someone gets disconnected or... True. Well, you can have you can save it and come back to it at a later date, but the problem is there is you're playing email chess, you know that kind of yeah, old yeah. school way of way of uh, playing a game. Then save tonight. Ten months later, yeah, no. I've I've what? completed a few, but we've had to put things like hard thirty second or one minute yeah. timers on for the for each round. I'm the worst out of every, all of my friends. I I take forever over every move, um, and I'm probably not as experienced as some of my other friends as well. But I do enjoy it, and I. Th I think it's four that I've got. I don't think it's five's the latest, isn't it? The latest canon release. Sixes. No, six I've is the latest. I've got five and six, yeah. Oh, maybe um, I've got five then. Five is the one that I've played the most, I'd say. There's, there's a bit of a rule of thumb with um, Civ games. You don't buy them until they're on sale with the expansions and DLC, just because, just, not not from like a penny pinching point of view, but it's just, it tends to be then that they kind of fix all the stuff that they mm. thought would be a cool idea in the first one, but didn't really yeah. pan out. Definitely notice that on forums. It's good, it's it's reason. also a penny pinching thing as well. No, let's be honest. I'm, I mean, I'm humble. <laughs> That's what I do. All right, I didn't so, know you could put thirty second time limits on though. I'd be interested to play like a, a fast, a quick fire round at LAN or something. I'm not sure if uh, three minutes was what we played. I'm not sure if thirty second is possible, but three minutes definitely is. So you can play quicker. I've done that at LAN specifically, and we've still been up until three a.m. playing a, a game of Civ. How good would it be though if you had like a fastest finger first, like fifteen seconds per round? Like you would be there <laughs> checking everything out, like you know, ready to go as soon as it comes to your turn. It's like go, go, Panzers, fuck you, Danny. <laughs> you'd, need to, you'd need to know all the keyboard shortcuts and everything, wouldn't you? You wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to mouse and keyboard that. You'd be like, rrr, rrr, rrr. Yeah, yeah, mate, touch screen, <laughs> hollow lens, <laughs> VR, VR Civ, <laughs> VR Civ would be sick. Yeah, like that. Get out of the way, <laughs> Gandhi. I need to see this tail. This is Minority Report. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I've been playing two other games uh, this week. Oxygen not included. The reason I mentioned that, I know I talked about it a while ago, but um, I've played the latest update now, the, the release update. Uh, there's not too much difference. They've changed the way that, like, your... I told you, you print these little 3D printed colonists. Yeah. Um, they... The way that they skill up is slightly different. There's a few new items in the game. Um, they've made it so instead of you starting on a randomly generated asteroid or planet, and uh, at the top of the planet there's space, uh, and it's like a vacuum, at the bottom of the planet, um, it, I think it was just lava previously. Now they've got lots of different types of asteroids, and like you might start on an ice planet and it, everything's freezing cold and you have to heat your base up. Whereas if you start on a hotter planet, you can't plant certain plants and you can't, you know, you can't do certain right. things. Yeah. It makes things quite difficult if you put it on, if you get a randomly generated level that's like really, really hot. Or But you get, um, there's lots of um, features like frozen core, for example. You can have a really hot planet, but the, the where you start is freezing cold. 
Um, so you can manage it. it. It's all about dealing with what you've been given. And it's a lot less about making... If you put it on the easiest setting, you can make like this beautiful, sim symmetrical, perfectly orientated base that does heat up over time and it does stop certain plants growing and things like that. But generally, you can manage everything pretty well. But it's quite easy. And I think that's where people who've commented on steam and on forums have said oh they've ruined the game they made it too easy they probably just started on that level and never tried any of the others because when you put it on the extreme planets where it says survival very slim you know <laughs> it's it's like you start off and you're instantly melting everybody starts gets printed and fucking, you know <laughs> it's pointless um we don't but, have people here we have slime balls yeah yeah roll on the floor 3d Genetic printer ooze. this is this isn't a 3D printer, it's an ice cream machine. Yeah. Uh, and Did you say they were called simulants? Uh, colonists. Colonists. Simulants are, are like... It's Blade Runner. Yeah, That's Blade all. Runner. I've watched Blade Runner recently and I just thought I'd heard it before. And I thought, no. never mind. I might have said simulants by accident. I think there's another game <laughs> I'm playing with simulants in at the moment. Uh, okay. I can't remember. Love um, the it, soundtrack. But I am, uh, I am enjoying it. I th I'm trying to find the right setting for me because too easy is too easy. If, unless I just want to build a massive base and see yeah. everything, you know, and two and hard is almost impossibly hard, and it's like it's not as much fun. So yeah. somewhere in the middle, you know, trying to figure out which asteroid's best for me. Um, you can also put it on survival mode, which is standard kind of experience, or you can put it on um, like easy mode, which is people don't get hungry, they don't get stressed. Um, they all have different stress reactions as well, and they all like some of them will destroy things in your colony. Some of them will stress vomit. Other ones will like <laughs> they're ugly criers. Uh, <laughs> and just other other ones will be narcoleptic, and they'll just fall asleep on you in the middle of the while they're, while they're planting a fucking tree or something. <laughs> um, it's good. It's good. Um, the other game I played recently um, is Ultimate Chicken Horse Online. Specifically, wanted to talk about that because it's the first time I've ra I've played with random people on a game, especially an indie game, where one, there are loads of people playing it. I think it's cross-platform. I think people who play oh. on the Switch also play on the PC. Because oh, cool. the reason I think that is because a lot of the people we were playing, um, and, oh, God, it's actually it's actually really good, right? So online, you, you choose a lobby. Uh, you can load your settings up. So if you've unlocked all the default levels, you can use all your default levels and all your default skins that you've, you've unlocked. Um, everyone's really friendly. There's only been like one knobhead that we've met out of maybe a hundred sessions. And he was just, he was like, ah, you gay as you, or, you know, something like that. That was <laughs> all he said. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but everyone else has been really pleasant. But I think on the Switch, you must have like the D pad must be, um, must be auto responses like impossible or well done or, you know. Yeah. Cause a, league. Yep. Yeah. A lot of people do the same things all over the time. But then there are other people who type things in as well. And everyone, Probably some of them are quite young, but they're fairly mature, and some of them are really good. No one's been impossibly good yet, which is also quite good. So it's not. I was like... wondering how you'd stack up, like compared to these like cross-platform players. How are you doing? I so far have beaten everybody apart from this one guy um, who we've played. I actually really enjoyed playing with him because he was close. We were very close, but he was slightly better. I personally think I was on. I had a bad day. I've got to be honest with you. Oh. I'm going to stick with that because I was, I, I, was the I was doing mouth was funny. <laughs> I was doing some things that I, I was doing some embarrassing things, and I think it was the stress of playing somebody who's nearly as who's good nearly as nearly as good as you. And I was like, yeah. I was losing it. You know, I was losing. I was, I was... <laughs> the adrenaline gets up, doesn't yeah. it? Yep. <laughs> but if uh, if either of you do have it on another platform and you, and you do fancy playing it, or in fact, Thorno's got it. I think hasn't he? He's got it on Switch. I'll probably pick it up if if, if a couple of people have got it on. Um, and it's cross platform. Is well, it different? Is it a different game online? Is different. It's not like an no, update. No, it's the it? same thing. Um, it's basically oh, right. it's so. Good. Another beautiful thing is me and my wife could play on the couch together with people online. Oh, oh fantastic! Th that that is a perfect game for me. It's absolutely brilliant, and it's a lot of fun as well. It's challenging, and the thing that I like about it is is playing it. When people try and make it hard for me, and they're not making it impossible, because when you make you, you can literally block a level off and make it completely impossible, and it's like, well, what's the point? I'll just quit. You know, there literally is no point in playing until we get some that we can, you know, a bomb or something, so we can destroy that piece of thing. I don't mean quit out the game like rage quit. I mean just like for that particular round, right? There's no point in even going yeah. anywhere. Um, but yeah, it's good. Uh, I. 
I highly recommend it. And I'll stop wittering on now. We'll move on to our next section. Which we've retitled to Preview Hot Pants. Preview Hot Pants. <laughs> Not hot. Well, what was it before? It was Hardware Hot Pants. And... Hardware hot oh, pants. no, it was What You're Looking Forward To and what Hardware Hot Pants. To? Yeah. Okay. It's rubbish. I'm absolutely. I'm going to say the, the first one sounds like a conversation with your nan. What, what you're looking, looking forward to this forward Christmas? To this year? <laughs> <laughs> Have you got that new banjo kazooies? <laughs> new. <laughs> <sighs> I've got you an N64 for Christmas. I've, I've got, got you that new Crash Bandicoot 3 warp that you wanted. Yeah, <laughs> nan, like 20 fucking years ago. I mean, I wouldn't be upset by that. Like if someone no, no, it's a good game. Far, so it's kind of come full circle. <laughs> I picked up a computer from a from a car boot sale. It's called a CDO, <laughs> and I thought you might like it. You have to supply your own cassettes. <laughs> <laughs> In that scenario, it's like, yes, I do like this. Thank you. How much is that on eBay? <laughs> Ooh, no, no, it, it goes in my pile. It goes in my pile oh, of collective, right. collectible <laughs> consoles. Actually, they're not in a pile. They're in a boxes, in plastic boxes up in the attic now. Oh, you need to get them displayed out like on a big, massive wall. I do. Just have, yeah. Well, I had them all downstairs. I had like 15, to, no, about 19 consoles set up downstairs. Um, but unfortunately, every time I took one out, I never put it back properly. And it just ended up with big, massive cables. It was just one big fur ball of cables. Nice. Right. Anyway, so this section, our preview hot pants section, is uh, about. But we've changed it up a bit. So instead of just talking about hardware, instead of just talking about games that we're looking forward to, this is going to be like gaming news, uh, new game releases and announcements. So it might be a new trailer that's come out for something. Um, might be something happened in the gaming community, like a, a studio's been bought out or anything like that. Anything we want to talk about. Uh, hardware news as well, so if something news come out for a console or even new CPUs, as we've talked about previously, we will witter on about it here. Um, or we'll have an opinion piece. Now, by that, we mean, um, I haven't even explained this to these guys yet, but what, what we mean by opinion piece is that if we fancy talking about violence in video games or something like that and talking about it in a bit more detail, we'll do that. We used to do that. I used to be how we ran... Resonance Arcade years ago, we used to have a topic for every show and we'd spend two hours wittering on about it. We're trying to be a bit more concise, even though the last few episodes haven't really been very concise. <laughs> we've, we've ran over by at least half an hour, um, but hopefully people are enjoying that. So let's start off this week then with uh, Danny. Have you got anything new, any news, anything you want to talk about? Yeah, so the Borderlands 2 VR is now coming to PC. It was previously an PS4 exclusive, and it's a game that I've enjoyed in the past just playing on the screen, to be honest. I mean, I kind of burnt myself out on it back then, but it's been that long since I've touched it. I kind of want to experience it in VR now. And I've got, obviously, the gear and everything, just so people are aware. I do have a, an Oculus Rift and what have you. Um... One thing I did read, and I think it's just false information, fake news, as it's known, is that it was going to be a teleport-based system. But actually looking at the PSVR version, it's not. It's actually you can move around using, I'm assuming, an analog stick on whatever controller you're using whilst in a VR headset. Now, that causes problems for some people because it introduces motion sickness quite a lot of the time. Yeah, I've had it. Why a lot of games do the teleport-based system. But from looking at video of people playing it in vr looks really really good looks very immersive the only thing i can kind of like pick out is how shaky you would be with the controllers like it seems like you know when you're aiming a gun it's very like whoa like hard Don't to aim make me do it unless you literally just pulled out your like fucking tactical side and like had the controller <laughs> up near your chest and were like trying to like actually play out a gun i think it'd be very hard to like do <laughs> exactly like that <laughs> it'd be very hard to do the 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 dead aim kind of you know like be very very accurate with it but they're saying that like a lot of the borderland stuff you don't really have to be that accurate with it do you really it's like a pistol on the sniper maybe but for the most part you like wacky guns that just launch grenades and shit like that but for vr i've not yet come across a game or have a game that has a like a full story do you know what i mean like a fully fledged game that has a full length story there's not been that many they're all kind of a lot of them are tech demos and even if they are like triple a in the world of vr they are done in a very different way more arcade style so i think i'm gonna check out borderlands 2 vr 
it'll, I reckon it'll get me back into using the headset again because I have admittedly put it down for a while. So, yeah, mm. that's that's what I'm kind of looking forward to. But we'll see. I uh, I'm still not sold on VR yet. I'm I'm waiting. This, it's one of those. I, I I will say it's like one of those things. I did want to kind of be the first in and just be able to brag to people at how bloody good it is. And there are some cracking games. Oh, it's and brilliant. Even, yeah. It's Don't just, get me wrong. I, I, I think I... what puts a lot of people off is the cable trailing mm. and what's known as the screen door effect, which is basically where the lenses magnify said screens so much you can see the gaps between the pixels. And there's new generations of headsets out now, like the Rift S and stuff, but I don't believe that they've gotten rid of said screen door effect i think the pixel density has to be something ridiculously high to even mitigate that in any meaningful way and well, i think need, that those are the, you need at least like 4k per eye i imagine yeah. before you can yeah. like properly mm, stop exactly. noticing that kind of thing and, and i didn't realize that's what the screen door effect was i'd heard the term i've also used a few headsets and said i can see the, the pixels it's not yeah it, it's immersive and it's brilliant it's a it's a great experience but that's that, the um that in itself yeah, so I found with the screen door effect, it's not noticeable when you're playing a game where you're just running through, moving your head a lot, and you don't really, you're kind of focusing on how it how it is in real life. You're not, re you don't really need full sharp vision to know what's kind of going on. You kind of get that someone's coming towards you or someone's running away, quick shoot them kind of thing. Um, games where you're required to read and stuff, though, yeah, bad. You mm -hmm. have to get really, really close, and then you start paying attention to it, and it, it does become an issue. But I mean. Yeah, def I mean, if you've if you've tried it and you've not been on board with it, oh no, no, I it. am, I am on board with it. I tried it and I thought it was brilliant. I really did. I I, I thought it was a a fantastic experience. I, I tried it quite a lot, in fact, because my friend had a DK, it's a DK two, DK twos were the mm -hmm. ones before CD yeah. ones. Yeah, my friend had a DK two, and I haven't tried the higher higher resolution and and better ones. But we played. I played Half Life two. Um, quite. I think I probably played about an hour of it. I played Elite Dangerous. That is brilliant. But on Elite Dangerous, it massively suffered from the screen door thing, and also from the fact I couldn't read the HUD because it was a DK two. I don't know if that's any better with it, the. I found it all right on the CV one. It could be better. It's kind of one of them where you kind of back, you know, go backwards and forwards to kind of get bits and bobs of information if something's right. a bit too far away you might have to move closer to it, that kind of thing yeah but, there's I mean, a other, bit of that other than that I st and i've also played with a gear vr as well i've tried quite a lot of games i borrowed a gear vr from it and used my s6 which overheated and crashed quite a few <laughs> times because it does not <laughs> it does not like running vr nice. um and I, i've also tried there was a, a an arcade um like a tech demo arcade where you could go into a, an old like retro arcade and play loads of different games i thought that was really cool um yeah and i liked it i j and i played roller coasters i've done all kinds of little tech demos and stuff but i just don't feel like i can th there's not enough out there yet for me yeah Simple i can that. see that especially with how you consume your games it's like yeah i can see there's not been enough out there M mostly tech demos a lot of it especially i'm not i don't have a vibe so i can't speak for it but a lot of the vr stuff coming out is very Sure, it seems like people have kind of jumped on the bandwagon. You know how the remember the time when it was sort of like people pushing out crap games, selling them on Steam. Uh, who cares if people ask for a refund if people played it for kind of the cash grab scenario? Some some of the games feel a bit like that. There aren't some fully fledged, mm. you know, as many fully fledged ones. It seems like people have definitely jumped on that bandwagon. There are a few good ones though, and it annoys me about the exclusivity type thing. But have you seen or heard anything about Robo Recall? No, nope. the name rings a bell. It does ring Robo a bell, but I've, no, I've not seen it's, it. It is an Oculus Rift exclusive, as far as I'm aware. I don't know if the Revive, which is like a, I believe it's a way of getting other games across to different headsets and stuff, have done Ro uh, Robo Recall. But it's like an arcade based shooter, and that's the game that I got with the headset, and it's fucking brilliant. You like? That, is that the one where you're on a platform and you're moving around? No, it's you're like in a city. It's a teleport based game, so you do have to like use the analog stick to choose where you're going. But all these robots come at you, and you've got like a shotgun on your back, you've got pistols at your sides, 
and it's just fucking carnage. But you can also like reload. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, oh, it's just brilliant. And I've just unplugged my headset. Let me just plug that back in. <laughs> well, you'll have to um, you'll have to bring it to the to the well, I've been I've been thinking about doing that, but then I think Thorne mentioned that they've got hardware, but they don't bring it. But I'm happy to bring it because it's just a space for setting it up. Because I definitely would like to show people some of the good stuff I've experienced already. Because all, know... all I really want to do is look at the the difference in resolution for the for the commercial version to the yeah. the, the developer version. Because that's I can remember how bad it was. I could see yeah. the the potential, but I also knew that. I mean, at the moment, I've got a, a an RTX twenty eighty tie. And it might just about That'll, run. I mean, it, it'll run. It'll annihilate anything in VR. But it wouldn't run two 4K screens. Oh, no, probably not. No. Which is where it needs to really be. And the, the GPU hardware isn't quite up to yeah. speed with that yet. So I want to see how close is 10. Is it 1080p or is it 960 and I? Um, I think it's 960. It, it's not quite 1080 and I because you don't need the full field of vision like you would with a monitor. I'm just trying to think now. Because I think one of them is, I think it might be the Vive that's 1080 per eye. I might be wrong there. But either way, I still don't feel like it's quite up to speed. And when it is cool, I'll probably go for it. By that point, hopefully there'll be quite a lot of games out there. Backward compatibility will be in. in and we'll see. I, I think 21, the biggest problem is that it's... p per eye. It, it's got it, it's at the early stage where like it was with video games like when they first came out you know you people don't really know what to do to make it fun people are experimenting with it and likewise the hardware still needs to catch up i mean yeah the stuff you can do now is pretty impressive but like after like a couple of hours of using it like you can really feel it like pushing into your face and you know with the wires and everything else and the screen door effect it's it does it's become good cumbersome. yeah it definitely it's, does become cumbersome it's good, but it's it's still not there yet. And I, I, I've I've got a DK one and a Vive, and the the jump between them is incredible. Like it, it's it really is incredible. But at the same time, it still needs to jump a little further before it's going to really really capture people. Do you um? Uh, do you either of you get VR sickness at all? No, I I did with the DK one a little bit. But that was playing. I was. I basically used to use it to play um, TF2 and Half Life 2 because they supported the DK1, which for some reason they removed, probably because of the motion sickness. But I, I have to say, like, I can see the potential of it because they were playing Half Life 1 on the DK1, uh, sorry, Half Life 2 on the DK1. There was this bit where I was running through the apartments at the start of the game with, you know, quite immersive, a little bit motion sick. And, like I went into this room with all these people, these two people sat there watching TV and I walked up and I picked up their TV and threw it out the window and something about the immersion of it just had me in hysterics. I <laughs> I just, I was laughing to myself, just this evil laugh that I, like, this is all they had in the world and I'd just thrown it out the window. You know and what? Was... <laughs> I played um, Surgeon Simulator in, in for the first time. I, I don't think it was in VR. I think it is in VR now. But I had I had an absolute fit of hysterics playing that because it was ridiculous, utterly ridiculous, and I, I just I can't remember exactly. What, I think it might have been when I was playing it in VR actually, and and it, and it was just again not, maybe I don't even know it was the immersion, but I couldn't stop laughing. I had to put <laughs> down what I was doing and go and chill out somewhere. And maybe it's a VR thing. <laughs> it, it's it's a it's such a good game to play VR that I I remember distinctly looking down into this person's chest cavity after I dropped a drill in there and it was just like vibrating, <laughs> and just, around, just blood smashing this. Is this poor person's rib cage? Just psh, psh, psh. Oh, <laughs> it, it's, it's the ultimate medium for vicarious living, isn't it? Basically, that's what <laughs> it is. Much. But yeah, anyway, enough with the VR stuff. I kind of went down a rabbit hole there, didn't I? So. Well, it was me. I was asking questions. It was, it, it, that's the thing. Is it's. I think VR still got a bit... I think the summary I'm getting from this, and most people I speak to, there's nobody who doesn't have a problem with VR yet, who, who says it's perfect. Everyone says it needs a bit more work. Whereas, do we just accept that the way that we play games on a PC, we've got a screen or, or on a console, we've got a screen in front of us, we have this controller that's been kind of forced on us or a mouse and keyboard and is that is that good is that enough 
Yeah, that's a good question. Actually. Or do we or do we need the VR engagement? Is it going to be suitable for every type of game? Or is it just going to be suitable for certain types, even if we get over all the technical limitations and the um, you know the physical sickness? Oh, VR sickness is awful. I said it was actually after I played... Um, I think it was after I was... I played Half-Life 2 VR for about two hours, and then I played Elite Dangerous for probably about 20 minutes, and then I just suddenly got really, really warm. Like extremely yeah. warm and I had to go I didn't throw up or anything, but I had to go and lie down and it didn't it didn't subside for about thirty, forty minutes. It was really I've never had that ever in my life for anything. So Yeah, I think the game is definitely matter. I've already come across one game type that it doesn't like fit at all. Like there's a game called Lucky's Tale, which is actually a three D platformer and you kind of sit and observe as an observer, if you kinda of get me. Like that you are the camera in that scenario, you can move around. But you can just play that with a controller. It literally. I know you're talking about the whole scenario of is it a good method of input for that game? Yes, it is. Do you know what I mean? You're still stuck there playing with a controller, but in VR, so there's no point. I think it only becomes useful when you have the controllers that attract and it tracks body parts. First person shooters is something I would love to get into with VR, but I think we need to wait for like Ready Player One level of kit for that, where yeah. you've got like a treadmill and a like body armor that actually like hurts you when you get shot stuff like that would be super cool Sp speaking of ready player one have you seen you've seen the film yeah have you have you read the book no fuck the film really fuck the film read the book it's <laughs> hugely disappointing it's the only film that i've ever watched where i've read the book and been i've been insulted by the film it's so bad in comparison anyway I'll give completely not what this podcast is about um <laughs> I was so there angry you know. when I when I watched that. I watched it after I read the book as well, and I was like, "What? They're just missing out whole chunks of they're yeah. not making the important parts of the book even remotely important." And ah, oh, that yeah. that this could be a separate podcast complaining about could. things that books do wrong, uh, well, that films do wrong. I am I legend. That's all I'm saying. I I'm not legend. usually. I don't usually have a problem. Normally, I'm okay. I accept that they are two separate entities, and you can enjoy them. But in that particular instance. There was nothing that was preserved about the book that was good. They they took all of the shit points of the book and made them shitter in the film and ignored all of the good points. It was like you could have done... Even, I know you had licensing problems. You know, Spielberg get has a certain amount of um, oomph in the world. But there was so many parts that they could have done with the licenses that they did have and didn't do. Anyway, right. Move on. Tune in next Chill week out. for Resonance Library. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matt, what have you got to talk about this week? So this week, I've come across a game which I quite like the look of called Crying Sons, which is described as an FTL-like space combat game. And I I hadn't really heard much or anything about it until until like a week or so ago. But it, it does, like everything about it just seems like it's the sort of thing I'd enjoy. It's a Forex-style combat although they don't really say too much about the movement. I believe it's kind of like a mashup between FTL and like the Forex combat where you've got, uh, you, you know, like it, it's it's not just you in a ship. It's like you have a small fleet of ships against yep. whatever else. But I think basically that then on top of the idea of FTL, but it looks quite sort of deep space opera kind of game you know they've put quite a lot of effort into the story and the um especially the artwork the artwork's really nice it's it's pixel you know it's all pixel art but quite dense pixel art so it's not like too cartoony or anything like that it's not too it, it's quite expressive is what i'm trying to get across and it just it looks like something that's worth uh worth keeping an eye on basically I uh, had a quick look at it, and I love the style, first of all. Um, it looks really interesting. It looks like it'd be right up my street. There is a demo out, you know, on Steam. Which I didn't... Oh, yeah, free, I've scrolled, literally scrolled down one. It's a free demo. Thank I you. I have been too busy this week to do it, and I forgot about it, I've got to be honest, but I wanted to download the demo and have a quick go before the show so I could talk about it a bit more because it does look like something I would enjoy. It combines... I love FTL. I absolutely mm. love FTL. I, I, again, it's another one of them that I keep going back to. This is why I love indie games so much, because they give me, for the amount that I pay for them, even at full price, an indie game, normally, an 8-bit indie game, 15, 20 quid at the most, usually. For that, 
the amount of enjoyment I'm getting and the amount of times I'm going back to them and, and plowing more time into it, especially roguelikes, I I can't fault it. I cannot fault it at all. Um, but this is this looks like it's right up my street. It really does. Yeah, me too. I, I did play quite a bit of FTL. It was just... It, like, like you said, it's those sort of games where you can literally jump in for like 40 minutes, get angry, and then, you know, quit out. 20 minutes later, you're back in the game again. That That's the sort of gameplay I like. Something that irritates me, but doesn't put me off. <laughs> like, I, I want something to... to like I, I don't care that it's unfair sometimes. I don't care that you literally cannot win sometimes. That's fine because when you do win, it's better. It's just so much better. <laughs> There's a difference between um, it's it's that old adage of um, it's the taking part that, that counts. counts. I enjoy I enjoy doing a lot of things that I'm bad at. I'm fairly good at a lot of things. You know, <laughs> we will ask the, questions. <laughs> the things that I choose to do, I'm usually fairly good at because I enjoy the the you know, the actual activity, whatever it is. Um, I'm thinking of sports and things like that. Um, but I also don't care if I if I lose or if I, I don't win, as long as the part, take part is enjoyable. And it's, think, it's things like these roguelikes, you know, Rogue Legacy. Um, again, such a heavy learning, a steep learning curve. You get to a point in it where you're almost invincible. I'm really quite good at that game now, but I still can't complete it. The final boss can get fucked. He is the <laughs> biggest twat on the planet. He's seriously hard. I mean, all of the bosses are hard. And as I said, you have to get just the right build and hit him just at the right time within the, the particular level that you're doing to complete them. Um, and sometimes you can't. You just have to keep... You have to use a bit of a cheat. And there's not a cheat, but it's a, a mechanic in the game you can use to go back and revisit the bosses immediately. Um but yeah, this Crying Suns looks perfect. I've just watched the the video on on Steam, which is quite a bit different from the video on their website, and it's got a bit more gameplay on it. And yeah, it looks. It reminds me a bit of um, Homeworld, was it? I I haven't played Homeworld. I'm not sure. Was it? There was one where you were in space and you were controlling. Um, it's quite old now. Controlling fleets of ships, frigates, and. Um, I think it was called Homeworld, but it was it was it was very good. But it looked like that, but like a top down kind of two D version of that. Um, but yeah, looks good. Right. Hmm. Thing I wanted to talk about this week is a few things I had on my list, but that I've changed it at the last minute. Nintendo have decided to um, announce, in a very weird way, they pushed a YouTube video of uh, this ring thing. Right, right, and you know what Nintendo are like for innovating. Uh, yeah. They they love to release new bits of hardware, such as the Switch Labo or whatever it is. If you remember yeah, that, I remember that. So I remember yeah. it's still around, still still doing the rounds. Um, you know the the Wii, the Wii is a, a gimmick, really. The the nunchucks, um, the the Wii the Wii Fit stuff. The they they were the first people to ever create a Rumble Pack for the N sixty four. You didn't know that. That's a nice little fact. I did not know. Oh. They, they, we, we got. I don't know if you ever saw the N sixty four Rumble pack. She slotted it into the memory oh, yeah. slot thing, put batteries in it, and it gave you a rumble. And then it's like nobody. I think there might have been somebody else who had done that previously, but Nintendo were the first to like bring it to market properly. What? Do you know? I, I just I remembered when I got the rumble pack because I bought um, <laughs> I bought um, Star, it was Star Fox, wasn't it? Star Fox was on the yeah, yeah. N64. on the N sixty four. I remember buying it because it, you know, like you had the um, they all had the same kind of case, like the box that the N sixty four games came in, and then there was one where it was bundled with a Rumble Pack, and it was literally the same box, just much much bigger. So right. I was walking around like a child, just holding this giant box. <laughs> I mean, I, wa I was a child, so I guess the story kind of petered out there. And but I mean, the the point was that, that Nintendo. <laughs> You know, they innovate. They're the ones that bring usually yeah. ideas to market that aren't necessarily the best ideas, but they end up being standard. Some, you know, the, the, someone takes the that proprietary idea, and now, like, for example, Rumble Packs are in everything. Every yeah. every single controller has them. I would say the Wii, the Wii controls inspired like the PlayStation Move and stuff like that as well. Like, yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, definitely. VR, yeah. yeah, and they, I mean, Nintendo uh, brought out the Virtual Boy. 
Yeah, they back did. in the nineties, and that was like the first commercial virtual reality awful headache, <laughs> cancer inducing thing that it was. Um, but so anyway, what's the so point in this, this ring thing, this Nintendo ring thing. Have you watched the video? I can, I'm, I, I've, I'm, I have watched the video. Yeah, I'm, I've been watching it. I've just been re-watching it to make sure that I'm not like having a stroke, and I'm actually seeing people use this as a, like it, a fitness aid. It, well, that's the thing. That video. There's no, there's no audio on that video. There's no, there's nothing describing what it yeah. is really. It's just, it's just a lot of people twanging this thing together, <laughs> and it's like they're gonna, they're gonna break it. What are you doing, mate? What are you do? put it down? But anyway, it's a new fitness aid. Um, okay. you, you somehow stick your switch controllers inside it, and then there's another switch. Um, one of the switch Joy Cons goes in the the ring, and there's another thing that goes around your leg, um, like a strap, like a garter <laughs> that you stick the other. Um, you stick the other switch thing in, Joy-Con, and then you do exercise based on nothing because there's no heart, there's no games out there, there's no game announcements with this this video. Excuse me, sorry, I'm having a bit of a fit here. Um, but they're apparently tomorrow they're properly announcing it, so this is just to get people talking about it. This video they released a few days ago or last week, I think, on Friday. Um, but it looks interesting. I don't know. I'm not sure this will be a new innovation. I've got to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's a new fitness aid for, but you know the Wii was the, the winner last generation don't you yeah I mean the Wii U was a massive failure but the Wii yeah. um, the Wii was yeah it was sold out everywhere every Christmas for not just three, sold yeah. out I mean it sold in magnitudes more than all of the other consoles put together and the Switch is on course to do that as well this uh, this generation I know the I think the PS4 has just hit 100 million sales probably a bit more now um, but it was just 100 million but the Switch, at this point in its life cycle, is matching the PS4, if not slightly exceeding it. Wow. Um, so it's probably going to... I mean, it's a, honestly, it's a wonderful console. And if you just had a Switch and you weren't someone like us who have multiple consoles and PC, it's got a lot of good games on it as well. Yeah. Definitely. It's got serious games and it's also got the you know the casual games, which is the stuff that sold the Wii, really. You know, sold it to your grandma and your your mum and your dad and, and everybody else who wanted to buy and one. And then daft Wayne scales that you got for the Wii. Well that's that's the Wii that was the Wii <laughs> fit stuff. That was um, the Wii fit stuff. Are they they're are they applying the same formula then, you do reckon, to the to the yeah. switch to try and open the market to yeah. To to an oh, extent that I mean it's a bit it's a bit more of a mature console. Um Yeah. And but it's it's also I really like. I, I mean, everything I like. I, I, there's nothing I don't like about the Wii, apart from the the, the Joy Cons failing. I don't know if you guys have, or Matt, you've had any Joy Con issues. No, as, so far I've been fine. I, I know about them, and I, I did. I remember reading a lot about them before I bought the Switch, and it did it put me off a little bit. But I, I've been fine. Although I do mainly play it kind of as a handhold with them attached. So you might never. I'm, you might yeah, never I'm, see it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really impressed, and I'm not sure about this swing, this switch ring thing. Tomorrow, hopefully next week, we'll talk about it a bit more. But yeah, it's got us, got us whittering on about it at least. Anyway, this odd video that they released. How long before somebody can pre get completes Mario Odyssey with it? That's what. Uh... That's exactly what somebody said somewhere. <laughs> that someone will be speed running Breath of the Wild with it. <laughs> anyway, right. Anything else you guys want to talk about? I think we're uh, exhausted. No, I think that's pretty much it from me. I'm blabbered out, I believe. Well, we might even have hit our uh, our one hour time limit this week, even with all the extra blathering on that we've done. Jibber jabber. Right. Quit, so. No. <laughs> all right, Danny. Yeah. A bit of a seizure there. Right. So that is the end of the show. Thank you very much for listening. And we hope to see you again next week. So you can watch all of our shows on youtube.com forward slash Resonance Arcade and visit our website at resonancearcade.com where you can find info about the show and links to all of our social channels. Should you wish to, you can also follow us on Twitter at Resonance Arcade where we publish show announcements and news. And finally, you should join us in Discord on discord.resonancearcade.com where we hang out and discuss all things gaming. Yes, and that all that's left to say is goodbye. See you later, everyone. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Ta-ta.